Good morning. My name is Pastor Jesse. Welcome to Worship Online. We're happy you've joined us today. Today we're looking at Luke chapter 4, Jesus and the miraculous catch of fish and the calling of his first disciples. We'll pray, we'll sing, we'll uh, hear the story and um, have just a couple of minutes that we can worship God together today. Let's open our worship in song. The first song is At Your Feet. I'll be right back. Amen. Amen. Um, so 
Kevin, who's who's my dog, and there he is. Kevin's not feeling so well. He um, he has an ear infection, and uh, he did not like uh, when I was giving him his medicine today. And um, so originally, I had planned a a children's message, a time with young Christians, uh, with Kevin, and we were playing follow the leader. Um, but he wasn't he wasn't being a good actor today. Um, as it turns out, Alyssa, who is my uh, my, my partner, she recorded a, a very similar message. Um, we, we planned together a lot. And she recorded a similar message with Kevin for her church, uh, which is Chatham United Methodist Church out in Morris County. Um, so she's going to share our time with young Christians today uh, with Kevin. It, they just recorded this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they didn't record it this week with, with Kevin's ear infection. So uh, we're giving him the week off from, from you know, uh, worship and acting abilities um, and, and he is getting better. He just, again, um, today wasn't, today wasn't a good medicine day. Um, but here's Alyssa and Kevin with our time with young Christians. Um, and then Cora will be reading the scripture and then I'll be back right after that. Kids, Kevin has been following me everywhere. But full disclosure, it's because I had treats in my pocket. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, good boy. And so this reminded me of today's scripture passage, which talks about how Jesus called to, called to Simon and Andrew and said, Hey guys, come follow me. Stop fishing for, for fish and fish for people. I'll show you. I'll show you the way. And Simon and Andrew got so excited because this is Jesus. Jesus is calling them and wants them to follow. This is exciting. And Jesus is calling us still today because Jesus loves us and wants to teach us how we can call other people into this great new way of living. Let's pray. Hey God, Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for loving all people. Help us to live like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye, kids. Luke 5, verses 1 through 11. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you said so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you, are fi you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me? 
Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Amen. Amen. And a special thank you to Alyssa and Kevin for uh, providing our children's message uh, this morning. For Christmas, um, Alyssa got me a Nintendo Switch, um, and I, I keep calling it my Game Boy. Um, <laughs> for Christmas, I got her a, a, a big beanbag chair um, that's too big for, for her apartment, so it's, it's living downstairs in, in my living room. Um, and so really, since Christmas, I've been playing my Game Boy in a beanbag chair, and, and teenage Jessie is, is very happy um, that even at 31, I'm still playing Game Boy in my beanbag chair. Um, one of what <laughs> one of the games that that I bought was a game uh, where I play as a as a pirate, and um, I get to go around and and have uh, naval battles and plunder and sail around the Caribbean, and and it's it's a really it's a lot of fun, um, and it's a really fun game to play, especially because I I haven't been in school uh, for the past couple of weeks. Um, but now that school is starting this week, that you know I, I have to stop playing my Game Boy so much and instead go back to doing my homework. But I've been playing this game so much that that I've you know I, I uh, my brother sent me um, some sea shanties. Uh, it's it's a group a musical group called um, the Longest Johns I think, and they they are singing she she sea shanties. Oh, that's going to be hard to say uh, more than once. Um, things like the Weller Man and and what would you do with a drunken sailor? Um, and it, it's been a lot of fun to to for a couple of minutes to to immerse myself in in these pirate video games and and in these songs. Um, it's a pretty violent video game, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk much more about it. Um, but when I was reading the scripture today, when I was reading the scripture this week, uh, what what stuck out to me in verse two and three. Um, was was Jesus hopping on this boat. It says, Jesus saw at the water's edge two boats. This is Luke uh, 5, verse 2. The boats were left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. Um, and maybe it's because I've been playing this pirate game so much, uh, but I just want to point out that the, the story opens with Jesus commandeering a water vessel. Um, and, and, you know, I'm not saying he was a pirate or anything like that. He didn't hop on board saying a vasty matey or, or anything fun. But it, it, it's interesting that Simon was out of the boat. He was cleaning his net. He was on the shore. And then Jesus, Jesus calls him back onto the boat. Um, and, and again, it, it, it's really just me poking fun because I've been playing so much pirate games. Um, but the story, and, and I think this is one of those times where we have to go back a page, we have to go back to the end of Luke chapter 4 um, to get an idea of what's happening and why Simon hops back on the boat and brings Jesus out into the water. Um, so if we, if we turn back a page, we go back to Luke 4, we'll see that Jesus left Nazareth. It's um, really a couple of minutes after, uh, after our sermon and, and the, the story that we read in the, in the Bible last week. Jesus leaves Nazareth, he goes into Capernaum, he goes into the, the countryside, and in verse 38 and 39 in Luke chapter 4, we see that Simon's mother-in-law had a fever, and that Jesus rebuked the fever, and, and Jesus healed Simon's mother-in-law. Now, now Simon is also, his, his full name is Simon Peter, and Jesus eventually just renames him to Peter, meaning rock. Um, so if I say Simon or Peter or Simon Peter, it's all the same person. Um, and, and, you know, we're going to see a lot of Peter later on. Um, now, now, Simon Peter's mother-in-law is, is healed. And in verse 39, it says that his mother-in-law got up and began to serve food and began to wait on Jesus and all those of the family who were there. And I think this is one of those verses that there's a little bit more that we can read in between the lines. Because I think if, if, if this rabbi, if this teacher came to your home and healed your mother-in-law, there would be celebration. There'd be happiness. There'd be, um, you know, shaking hands and giving hugs. It, even in the age of COVID, we'd, we'd give our elbow bumps to one another. And I wonder, it, as they were eating afterwards, did Jesus start talking and start teaching about the kingdom of God? And did Jesus start, you know, in, in inquiring into what everybody else did with their lives? You know, Simon, tell me, what do you do? And, and Simon's like, well, you know, Jesus, I'm a, I'm a fisherman. I, I have three boats with, with two of my friends who are brothers. And um, you know, we have this little enterprise down, down by the sea. 
And and I wonder again if, if Jesus showed excitement. If Jesus is the son of a carpenter. Maybe he never was on a boat before. And, and so maybe Simon invited Jesus out onto his boat and said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take you fishing one day. Or if you come and, and check me out, you know, I, we fish at night. But if you come in the morning, um, you know, we'll have some lunch. You can tell me more about this kingdom of God. It, Luke doesn't write this part down. Um, and, and, you know, again, th- this is something we'll see in the Gospels a lot. That the gospel writers don't write every single thing down, every single conversation. But I can't help but wonder if if Jesus had already built a relationship with Simon because of the healing of Simon's mother-in-law, but also just because Jesus wanted to know as much about Simon and um, and you know started building a friendship with Simon. And so then when Jesus commandeers this fishing vessel, uh, Simon doesn't yell at Jesus to go away. He doesn't, you know, try to attack Jesus. He says, you know, Rabbi, teacher, good morning. It's good to see you. How are you? He's probably telling James and John, the, the brothers, you know, this is the guy who healed my mother-in-law. This is, this is the teacher I was telling you about. Simon's probably excited to see Jesus and um, excited to see this miracle worker and this teacher. And what it says in the scripture is a crowd was surrounding Jesus and so Jesus asks Simon Peter to, to hop into the boat and to row out a little bit, a little bit into the water, into the shallow part of the water, so that way Jesus can teach the crowd that had gathered. And that's where we pick up this morning. The, Jesus is teaching the crowd, and I think everything that follows, him teaching the crowd, being in the shallow water and going into the deep water, the miraculous catch of fish and and James and John, and then finally the calling of the first apostles and the calling of the first disciples. I think all of that starts back in chapter four and really speaks to, to, in my opinion, what is going on and what we can pull out of this message. In in verse four, it says, when Jesus had finished speeding, speaking, excuse me, he said to Simon, put out into deep water, and let down the nets for a catch. Now, again, remember, Simon's a professional fisherman. He's not a hobbyist. He's not fishing, um, you know, with a pole for, for one fish. Jesus, or excuse me, Simon, along with James and John, have this enterprise. They have a couple of boats. They have huge fishing nets. Um, they are professional fishermen whose, whose livelihood depends on being fishermen. And they want to haul in hundreds of fish at once, not not one or two fish. They want to they want to ha- they want to gather thousands of fish so that way they can buy more boats and buy more staff and retire comfortably on their IRAs. And so in verse two it says the fishermen were washing their nets, they were cleaning them because they had spent all night fishing. And then Simon says in verse five, Master, we worked hard all night and haven't caught a single fish, but because you tell me to. I will let down the nets. So Simon's basically saying, Jesus, I've been up all night. I have been working for the last 12 hours from dusk until dawn, and we haven't caught anything. I just finished washing the nets. I I cleaned out all the seaweed. I cleaned out all the muck. They're finally clean. I folded them back up. And you want me to do this again? (laughs) Okay. And, And Simon says, I'm only doing this because you ask me to. But again, I I think we have to think back to to the last chapter, to Simon's mother-in-law being healed by Jesus. Because, yes, Jesus is a rabbi. He's He's a teacher. He's a son of a carpenter. He's not a fisherman. But still, I think Simon knows that there's something remarkable about Jesus and something remarkable about who he is and the miracles he performs and the words that he's speaking about the kingdom of heaven. And, and so I think, yes, while Simon is probably exhausted and angry that he hasn't caught anything, he still trusts in Jesus and throws the net out. And I think it's important to, to see what happens next and connect it back to chapter 4. Because, again, it's not that Jesus just happened into a fishing town and happened, among these, uh, happened upon these fishermen and tried to change the situation. Jesus knew Simon ahead of time. And... And at the very least knew Simon's name, and, and Jesus knows all of our names, but, but Simon knew who Jesus was. I, I, there was already recognition. There was already um, a rapport that was building. He's already built trust with Simon. He was already in Simon's life. And then he says to Simon, basically, I want you to take one more step. Jesus isn't asking Simon for a huge leap of, leap of faith. It, the worst that happens 
is that Simon's net gets dirty and he has to wash it again. This isn't this isn't leaving behind your job to enter the seminary or to enter a monastery or to become a, a you know a missionary. This is one little step. You're already a fisher. Do your job one more time. And instead, Jesus Jesus doesn't ask for a big leap. He asks for a little step, a little step. And 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 it's interesting because for some of the disciples, Jesus asks for big leap of leaps of faith. Sell all of your belongings, give the money to the poor, and follow me. And then for others, Jesus says, it's not a big deal. Just, just I'm going to heal your mother-in-law. Now, now bring me out to the boat and listen while I'm preaching. And now go out a little bit further and, and go fishing like you normally would. Now, it's not at night, which was a big deal for the fishermen because the fish could see the net during the daytime. But still, Peter, Peter takes that little step. That, that little step further. There's also another important point. If we think back to verse 3 and 4, Jesus starts by saying, put out a little from shore so that I can teach. Put out a little bit. You know, he's not going into the deep water. They're in the shallow water. You could probably walk back to the seashore um, at, you know, in verse 3 and 4 because it's easy to turn back to dry land. It's safe in the shallow water. But here Jesus says, now go out into the deep water. Go out into the deep part of the lake, and and that's a little bit more tricky. Because there could be anything out there. Yes, there could be fish, and, and you could catch the fish and sell them and, and, and make your livelihood. But there could be a sea monster out there. There could be a squall, a storm that comes in that threatens to sink the boats. We've, we've seen squalls later on in the Gospels. There could be actual pirates who are coming to steal us or to murder us. Going deeper isn't easier. And, and so what I think Jesus is doing is he's asking Simon to take one more step to go into deeper water. It's, it's like Kevin with his ear infection. Um, over the weekend when he got his ear infection, um, he, he fought me a lot with his ear medicine. Um, he, he does not like it. And again, after today, he really doesn't like it. Um, but I have to give him a little bit of medicine at a time. I can't just heal him. It, it's not... It's not like his ear is going to get better over one day. It's going to take a week or two for his ear infection to, to fully heal. It's the same thing, I think, with Jesus, where Jesus is telling uh, Simon to take one step, to take one more step. And, and eventually, Kevin's ear is going to get better. Eventually, Peter will understand and, and leave everything to follow Jesus. That's what's happening in the story here, and, and that's what will happen with James and John, the, the brothers who, who uh, Peter is working with. Jesus starts with one step. He starts with knowing them, with being in their lives, and then asks them to take one more step, and then to take another, and then another. And then it says once they get out into the deep water, and once Simon puts the net over the side of the boat, they catch such a large amount of fish they catch so many fish that, that James and John have to bring out a second boat. And between them, they can't haul all the fish up. And they're holding onto the net, hoping that it doesn't break by the time they get back to the shore. This is so many fish that, that maybe they could have bought another boat. Maybe they could have bought more staff. Maybe they could have sold all this fish and, and retired, um, you know, re retired comfortably. It, it says that they couldn't catch any more fish or else their boats would capsize. So they limp back to shore with more fish than they've ever seen, with, with their wildest dreams finally being answered. And then in verse 8, it says, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Get away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And what's interesting is that Jesus doesn't forgive his sins. Jesus doesn't chastise him or rebuke him. Jesus doesn't say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Jesus' response in verse 10 says, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. From now on, you will fish for men. And so Peter and James and John, they, they it says in verse 11, they pulled their boats up on shore. They left everything behind and followed him. They left everything behind, including the fish, including the, the, the miraculous fish, the thousands of fish that they caught that they easily could have gone into the market and sold all of them. They left the fish. They left their boats. They left their newly dirty nets. They left everything behind, and they followed Jesus. Friends, Jesus has already taken that first step with you. 
no matter what that looks like, and, and we all have different first steps, but Jesus has already taken that first step, whether he has healed you, whether he has healed someone you know, whether you have known Jesus your whole life and were raised in the church, or only very recently have you encountered Jesus, whether it's through somebody else or, or through his word or through music, Jesus has already taken that first step toward you. And now he's inviting you to take that first step as well, to, to take another step, to, to not, not take a big leap of faith, and maybe that is the next step for you, but to take one more step. Jesus is inviting each and every one of us to take another step because he's already taken that first step toward us. He invites us into deeper water. He invites us into deeper water where there's uncertainty, where there may be sea monsters or sharks or pirates or squalls and storms, but there might also be fish out there. And that's where Jesus is. And so he is inviting us to take one more step. And I don't know what that step is for each and every one of us. It, it might be for us to read our Bible more. It, it might be for us to join the, the, the fellowship time. It might be us for joining a Bible study or to find a way to volunteer. Um, maybe it's a big step or a big leap of faith to, to leave your job and enter ministry. Or maybe it's a small step, which doesn't mean it's less important, to still follow Jesus and to, tilt, and to still take another step in your ministry. Each and every one of us has a ministry to share the good news of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to look like mine that I stand up and preach in front of the, the congregation once a week. In, in fact, I, I would argue that I'm way less effective than some of you who, who go out and spread the good news to your coworkers, to your friends and family, who, who I'm preaching to people who have already heard Jesus. You are preaching to people who may not have. And so I think that Jesus is calling each and every one of us to take one more step whether it's a baby step or it's a big leap of faith, Jesus is calling us to take a step. And maybe it's to share the good news. Maybe it's to share the good news with our friends and family, with our neighbors. Maybe it's to share the good news in our workplaces. Maybe our, our next step is to help somebody else. Maybe our next step is to help somebody else realize what their next step is. Maybe our next step is to help shepherd people or to help find a connection or to help them look around and say, what am I supposed to do? Maybe our next step is to share God's love with someone else. But, but when we get up and when we follow him, we have to know that we are following him all the way to Jerusalem. We are following Jesus all the way to Calvary, all the way to the cross. That is inevitable. It's not going to change. Even though um, Simon and James and John's story begins by the lake, no matter what, it's going to end at the cross in Jerusalem. And so do each and every one of our steps. But today, Jesus is asking us to just take one more, to take one more step, to, to find a way to reach out, to find a way to connect. Jesus is calling you. And whatever he is inviting you to, whatever he's inviting each and every one of us to, we have to take that step. We have to head for deeper water. We have to start swimming. Even if it's just learning how to swim, even if it's going from our ankles to our knees, Jesus is still calling us into the deep water and saying, come. And so we have to begin. We have to follow Jesus. Let's pray. Gracious God, Lord, as you called Peter and James and John, as you called your first disciples, Lord, we, we ask that you continue to call us. Whether it is one step at a time or a giant leap of faith, Lord, Lord, give us courage. Give us the courage to follow you, the courage to follow you even into the deeper water, even into uncertain deep water where we don't know what is going to happen. Lord, we follow you because we are obedient. We follow you because we love you. We follow you because you first took that first step toward us, that you took that step toward Jerusalem, that you took that step toward the cross and that you have already called us and already know our names and already know what we do. And you still love us and still call us and still ask us and invite us to take that step toward you. And so, Lord, give us courage that we may follow you obediently. Give us courage that we may put down our nets and follow you, that we may reach out to those who need you, those who are, are missing you, those who are lost without you that we may be shepherds to those who are lost, that we may be fishermen and 
and catch those who are, who are swimming, that, that we may go out of our way to show your love and to spread the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, to all we come into contact with. Lord, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against you, us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Uh, friends, our hymn of response is Lord of the Dance. Uh, let's continue our worship this morning. I dance in the morning when the work was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth at Bethlehem. I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, and He and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. with the scribe and the Pharisees, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance and he and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. Full disclosure, yes, I, I goofed on the Lord's Prayer. It's one of those when you say something so many times um, that, that you think you know what it is and you your brain slips a little bit um, that sometimes you, you mess up. You okay, Kev? His ears are itchy. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Today at 11 o'clock, we are having Coffee Fellowship. Um, this is online. This is uh, digital. doesn't have to be for an hour. It could be for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, the full hour. Um, the Zoom information is down below. Please join us. Uh, we'd be happy to connect with you and, and to say hello to you. Uh, today at 4 o'clock is confirmation. Confirmation class online at 4 o'clock. Uh, you do need your Bibles again and your confirmation handbooks. Um, on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. is our Bible study. Um, the Zoom information is down below. All are invited. 
Uh, it, it's not something that you needed to attend last week. Every week kind of stands on its own. Um, and we're discussing the, the same text from today, Luke chapter 5. Uh, but that is Wednesday. Again, the Zoom information is down below. Um, finally, friends, uh, in 2021, we started a new giving platform um, for our electronic giving through the church. Uh, this new platform is, is a little bit easier to use. Um, but it also gives us the opportunity to save a little bit of money in our fees uh, rather than passing them on to the church. You can find all, all the information at marltonumc.com slash give. Um, all the information's there, but if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you to everyone who has switched over to the new system, to all those who have continued to remain faithful in your tithes and offerings uh, by mailing in uh, your offering or by dropping it off at the church. Um, it really helps, and, and the church is in a good place for us to uh, make some decisions on how to move forward. Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to get excited about in 2021, um, and I join you in, in waiting for the day that we can be back together, uh, that we can have a big potluck dinner, that we can have communion in person, that uh, we can worship and, and hug and, and shake hands and have youth group in person and all the things that we are missing. Um, I join you in that. And uh, for those who have been faithful, thank you. It, it is allowing us to plan out um, and, and how we can move forward. Um, for those who have been affected by COVID, whether financially, physically, emotionally, uh, please reach out to the church. Uh, there are a lot of people who are able and happy to help any way that we can help. If it's helping you sign up for a vaccine, if it's helping you connect to people, um, if it's financial or food or uh, clothing, if, if it's furniture, anything we can do, please reach out to us. Um, again, there are a lot of people who would love to help and uh, any needs that, that we can meet, we would love to do and, and love to meet. Um, so please let us know. Uh, our closing hymn is, And All the People Said Amen. Um, I'm sorry, I was reading a note in, in my planning uh, document about it. And all the people said, amen, hear this benediction as we go out in song. May all your journeys be led by the brightness of God. May you be generous with your time and gifts. May you have courage to trust the inner voices and find new ways to the heart of God. Go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, have a great week. I'll see you soon.